Lesson 45, we're going to look at coordinate proofs. Now, coordinate proofs, that can uh, sound scary, but uh, <clears throat> really it's, it's not, uh, it's no big deal, it's not very difficult. Uh, you, the main thing is you would have to make sure that you know uh, properties of these different uh, polygons that we're going to use for these coordinate grids. So let's look at example one. Uh, in lesson 45, it says triangle ABC has a base of 4 and a height of 3. Angle A is a right angle. Position triangle ABC on the coordinate grid. So whenever we do these word type of problems, we always got to look at what does it give us because it gives us information for a reason. So if I was just drawing a triangle, we know that it has a base of 4 a height of 3, well the height is always perpendicular, alright, a height of 3, and it does say that angle A is a right angle. So we need to use this part, and then obviously you would connect it, but we need to use this to place our triangle on the coordinate grid. Well the easiest way to do this is going to be to start at the origin. This is going to be our starting point. So we're going to call this 0, 0, alright, it's like a little owl. Uh, zero, zero. And if we know it has a base of four, well, I'm going to count four to the right. One, two, three, four. And this coordinate will be at four, zero. The last thing we know is that it has a height of three. Let's call it three, zero. Now, if we connect it, we can see that we have placed a triangle A, B, C on the coordinate grid. Now it could be shifted different places. It could actually, you can make it an acute obtuse triangle, doesn't matter. Actually, that doesn't matter, it's a right triangle. But it could be anywhere on the coordinate grid. Um, but to me, it's always easiest to start at the origin. That's an example of a coordinate proof. Now let's look at another one. Example two says triangle HIJ is isosceles. It, or it wants us to prove that triangle HIJ is isosceles. Well, what do we know about isosceles triangles? Okay, well when we hear the word isosceles, that should automatically inform us that it has two congruent sides. So we need to show that two of these sides are congruent. How can we show that this, if we don't have the length of it, how can we show that the sides are congruent? Well, if you remember, to find the distance between two coordinates, we're going to use the distance formula. So if I said distance of h, j, uh, that, and we did the distance formula, x2 minus x1, all that stuff, then we're going to be able to find the distance or the length of this side. And so what we need to do to, is uh, do the distance formula for all three sides. And then see if we have two congruent ones. So let's look at distance of h, j. x of 2 is 3 minus x of 1, 0 squared plus y of 2, 2 minus 0 squared. So therefore you get 3 squared, 9 plus 2 squared, 4. So the distance here is square root of 13. Square root of 13. Uh, now one distance is actually really easy to find. The distance from h to i is just 6. That's the change in x. So these two distances are not alike. So the distance of uh, j i needs to be the same distance as either h j or h i. So let's do the distance formula and find out. x of 2 minus x of 1. 6 minus 3 squared y of 2, 0, minus y of 1, 2, squared. If you don't know the distance formula, you need to go back to that lesson and make sure you learn that and refresh yourself on that. But uh, I'm just kind of going through it. 6 minus 3 is 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. So we get 9 plus negative 2 times negative 2, 4. And it is also square root of 13. So, since the sides are equal, we just showed through the distance formula that the triangle HIJ is isosceles. 
Another example of a proof here. This one can definitely be a little more confusing. Example three says, uh, A says you have a square with a side length of A. Okay, that's weird. Your side length equals a letter, A. Place the square on the coordinate plane and label each vertex with an ordered pair. So it doesn't really seem to have given us much. Well, we got to look at clue words. First thing it says is square. Well, what do we know about a square? Well, uh, we know all four angles are congruent. We also know all four sides are congruent. So how can we use what we know and place this square on the coordinate grid? Well, let's start at the order, uh, ordered pair of 0, 0, starting at the origin. We're going to call that one of our coordinates on the square. Now we need to figure out how to use the side length A. Well, what if I said the side length was 3? What if I said that? Well, then you would know to count 1, 2, 3 spots and place the next, um, place the next coordinate there because it has a length of 3. And you would go up 3. So you would call this 3, 0. Well, that, that is correct if you're using 3, but uh, that was just an example. What, so since it, is, since it is a side length of A, all we have to do is the same thing that we did in the last one. We can just put A, 0. We're just putting A in place of a number because we know that this, this side is going to be the same as this side and all the sides are going to be congruent because it's squared. So from here to here, we could call this coordinate 0, A. That would make this one, well, to get here, it was A distance in a sense. And to go up, it's A distance in a sense. So that coordinate or ordered pair would be A, A. And so that's kind of how you do a square. The key is that all four sides are congruent, so we only have to actually use one letter because it's the same number. Last uh, coordinate proof we'll look at is example uh, 3C. It says assign coordinates to vertices of isosceles triangle STU, STU, cool, uh, with a height of 4 from the vertex. So we've got to find coordinates for a triangle, STU, with a height of 4 from the vertex. So it gives us this says the height has to be 4. Uh, so we'll call this uh, 0, 4. There's our height. Now if it's an isosceles triangle, well, like we did in uh, a couple examples ago, we know that isosceles is two congruent sides. Two congruent sides. And so this isosceles triangle could range from different numbers. But the main thing that has to happen is on this side, it needs to be the same as this side. So if I had a triangle and I said this was 5, 0, this would have to be 0, or sorry, negative 5, 0. But since we're not doing a specific size, rather than 5, or a number, we're just going to use a letter such as x, 0. And if this one is x, this one must be negative x, 0. And so those would be coordinates on a uh, isosceles triangle. So that's how you do coordinate proofs. Uh, nothing scary, no big deal. The main thing is to make sure that you uh, just know the properties of these different polygons that you are trying to put on a coordinate grid. And that is the end of lesson 45.